Hi, I'm Callie from CRK Training. In today's video, we're going to talk about cantering. So I think this is actually one of the first blog videos that we've really talked about cantering. And what I'd like to do today is just give you a few tips for riding the canter, especially if you're just, uh, if you're new to cantering or if you're just struggling with uh, kind of getting in the rhythm and getting the feel of the canter. And I chose to use Bandit today for two reasons. One, he does have a nice steady rhythmic canter, but he also has a very big stride and a big movement at the canter. So it makes it easy for you to kind of see what my body is doing to be able to ride his canter. So that's why I decided to use him. And just a few things before we start, just a few tips. One thing that'll really help you with riding the canter is making sure that you can ride a sitting trot. And even though the, the movement in those two gates is very different, the concept and the skill of being able to relax through your hips, to stay with the horse's motion, is what you need to do at the sitting trot. And that's the same kind of skill that you're gonna need to be able to ride a canter correctly. So a canter is a three beat gait and it kind of has a rocking horse motion. And when the horse canters, to be able to sit in the saddle, which is how I usually have most of my students learn. I have them learn how to sit and really get the movement of that canter first before I teach them how to ride the canter in a half seat, which we're gonna go over both of them. I'm gonna show you what each one looks like um, in just a few minutes. But going back to the movement of the canter, so it has that rocking horse motion and when a horse canters, his shoulders are going to lift up and as the shoulders lift up you have to kind of let your your hips kind of rise up a little bit to stay with that motion and then as he reaches forward with the canter his shoulders are kind of kind of drop and stretch out and that's where you need to be able to kind of stretch up a little bit more so just like the sitting trot has that movement of the hips the canter has the same thing except for with the canter it's a little bit more of a rolling a little bit more of like a scooping motion which you'll see in just a minute so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him out here. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the canner and I'm not going to talk a lot. I'm just going to kind of ride it and I'm going to let you watch uh, my body as I'm going around. Now, just one thing, when you're cantering, for the horse to be balanced correctly, they need to be what's called on the inside lead. So when a horse is cantering, they're either on the right or the left lead. And that just means that it, like if he was tracking right here, his inside leg is going to be leading a little bit. It's going to be a little more out in front. It means he's just leaned that way. He's got a little bit more weight on that inside leg. And it helps him stay balanced when he's doing the circle. If he was cantering to the left, he would need to be on the left lead with the, um, with the again, the inside leg being a little bit in front to help keep it balanced. Now there are a lot of horses that struggle with picking up the correct lead and I do actually have another video that goes over this a little bit more in depth so I will link that one in the comments you know if you have that kind of an issue and when you ask for the canter the most important thing is have a rhythmic gait whether you're asking from a walk or a trot have a rhythmic gait first and have the horse balanced with a little bit of an inside bend the inside shoulder lifted so they're not leaning like this and then you move your outside leg back and the outside leg back is what cues the horse to pick up either the right or the left lead depending on what direction you're going so let me take him out here pick up the canter and uh, show you how i ride it Good. So this would be riding the canter with a deeper seat. Notice my upper body is still tall and lifted, but I've got a lot of motion through my hips to be able to stay in the saddle and stay with his movement. Now I'm gonna transition into what's called a half seat where I'm gonna incline my upper body forward slightly and I'm not going all the way into a two point, but I'm just keeping my my seat a little lighter in the saddle. Now one more time, I'm gonna go back to a, a full seat. Again, I'm sitting taller now. And I've got a little more scoop in my hips 
to stay with his movement. Good. Okay, so those are the two ways that you can ride a canner. Now, when would you use each of these? Like I mentioned previously, I usually have my new students that are just learning to canter, I usually have them ride with a full seat first. So sitting deep, learning how to really get that canter motion, what you have to be careful with is that you don't get really heavy and back here where you're actually driving the horse and having more of a driving seat which if you have a hotter horse, it can make them really quick. Or if you have a young horse that uh, isn't used to or hasn't learned to accept a little more of that deeper contact, that can again make a young horse, you know, kind of hot at the canter too. So when you ride that, that deep seat, think about keeping your upper body tall so that you have a good contact and weight in your seat, but that you're not back here driving the horse. And then when you would use a half seat, is if you're riding a jump course, if you're out on the trails, and the half seat tends to be, I know on him, the half seat is definitely a little more comfortable. So if I was out, you know, trail riding him, I would stay in a half seat because it's more work to sit back here and, you know, really think about riding the full movement of his canter. So those, just some tips to ride the canter. I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the comments and I'll look forward to seeing you there. And also, if you're watching this anywhere besides crktraining.com, go there. Most of the discussion uh, happens in the comments there on my website. Thanks for watching.